Wealth, fame, power. One Matt had acquired all these. Oh wait, wrong intro. Wealth, honor, power, revenge, transcendence. If you want them, go find them. It's all at the top of the Tower of God. Whoever reaches the peak can obtain anything they desire. But how far would someone go to climb this perilous tower? This is the story of Rachel, who journeyed to the tower to see the stars, and Bam, who needed nothing but the girl. On a seemingly endless road, Bam chases after Rachel until they both fall to the ground. An apologetic Rachel gently tells the boy he needs to forget about her, for she will climb the tower. All at once, petals start to fly through the air as Rachel slowly vanishes. A large set of doors opens, letting her glowing spirit pass through. Bam slams his fist onto the ground as he cries out in sorrow. Suddenly, a voice utters that he'll discover the answers at the top of the tower. The enormous entryway opens once more to reveal a massive hand that that carries Bam away. After a while, Bam wakes up in a large empty room. The same voice from earlier mentions that all visitors are welcome in this place. Bam turns around to see a dimly lit pathway. Behind him, a humanoid rabbit with a staff ears introducing himself as Hedon, the tower's caretaker. Bam can't believe this is the actual tower. And how come Hedon knows his name? Did he speak with Rachel? He has a lot of questions, but Hedon repeats that the answers can always be found at the top of the tower. But is Bam ready to take the test necessary to reach it? The background changes with a flick of Hedon's staff, revealing a metal barrier confining the white sea eel, a humongous aquatic monster. The rules are simple, Hedon says. Bam just has to enter the cage and break a black ball inside while avoiding the white steel eel. He can still turn back if he decides not to take the test. After all, the tower is dangerous for the likes of someone like Bam, but Hedon's voice trails off as the boy rushes to the barrier. Before Bam can plunge into the cage, a girl in a ponytail kicks him in the face. Yuri, the princess of Jahad, scolds Bam for being stupid, but he can't understand what she's saying since it's in a different language. Rushing into help, a guy with a huge travel bag named Evan hands over a ball. The sphere transforms into strings of light that pass through Bam. He can finally understand them, although Yuri thinks he didn't deserve that high-quality pocket. The pocket is their lifeline in the tower. It can act as a translator and turn invisible on command. Interrupting Evan's lecture, Yuri calls Bam an irregular, an outsider who entered the tower by opening the gates on their own. She notes that he's pretty weak for one who doubts whether he can survive the test. Hedon reprimands Yuri for interfering, warning her she could be executed if the king finds out. His job is to maintain order in the tower and ensure the royal family's prosperity. In that case, Yuri wonders why he's giving Bam an unfair test. Even those on the 20th floor have trouble handling this eel with steel scales, but Hedon thinks it's appropriate for an irregular. Nonetheless, Yuri and Evan think Bam is too fragile for this and asks Hedon to reduce the test's difficulty. But Hedon refuses, and so does Bam, who's ready to face this creature no matter what they think. Yuri doesn't understand why Bam's so determined when he knows practically nothing about where he is. Still, the boy refuses to give up. Hedon sneakily suggests that Yuri lend Bam the Black March, a blade of Jaha that can cut through anything. Evan immediately protests against this, as only the princess can hold the weapon. If others knew someone else wielded it, it would lead to her execution. However, Yuri still pulls out the black sword, lending it to Bam, because he's cute. Fair reason. Bam takes the black march and promises to return it once he breaks the ball, but Yuri reminds him to focus on his survival. Evan asks if Yuri's fallen in love with the boy or if she believes an irregular will change the tower. She confirms none of these theories, implying that she's just bored. Bam enters the cage and faces the white steel eel head on. The eel glides upward and then instantly crashes down on the boy. Yuri tries to interfere, but Hedon stops her. With its giant mouth, the monster devours Bam in a second. Wanting to help, Yuri orders Hedon to get out of the way, but Evan stops her, saying that Bam did the right thing. It's difficult to escape this monster, so the only way to defeat it is to enter its mouth. A few moments later, the eel throws up green slime along with Bam, who had stabbed the creature from inside. Overcoming the fear of death is the purpose of this test, and Bam possesses something greater than that. Upon reaching the ball, Bam tries to pierce the sword right through it. However, it barely earns a scratch. Even as he repeatedly strikes with his sword, Hedon giggles but refuses to reveal anything. He merely mentions that Bam's test has only just begun. 
Suddenly, a memory flashes before Bam. He was once a homeless kid trapped underground. He repeatedly tries to break a hole in the ceiling to escape, but to no avail. Fortunately, Rachel was there to crack it open. That was the first time they met. He told Rachel he couldn't remember anything, but she promised she'd always be there for him. The more he recalls these memories, his determination to break the ball heightens. Rachel told him she wanted to see the stars in the sky, so she wished to climb the tower. But for Bam, Rachel is the only star he needs. Still, the ball won't break. Worse, the eel has awoken to wreak havoc. In a panic, Evan screams at Bam to ask the sword to lend its strength. Yuri thinks it's crazy because the blade won't just listen to anyone. Nonetheless, Bam gives it a try. Suddenly, a blinding light illuminates the cage, sending the eel to the edge. A woman appears before Bam, asking if he wants the strength to climb the tower. But Bam responds that he just wants to see Rachel again. The woman thinks he's a silly boy, but since he's cute, she'll grant him her strength. As the woman embraces Bam, the ball finally breaks into pieces. The eel tries to attack them, but they suddenly disappear. Bam has ascended to the next floor. Evan then panics about how they can retrieve the Black March. Yuri calmly assures him they'll just go take it back, even though it's off limits for them to enter the testing grounds. Meanwhile, Hedon is impressed with the turn of events. As he rips the eel into shreds, he looks forward to what will happen next. While Bam slumbers in the woman's arms, she tells him that even if he sees Rachel again, nothing will ever be the same. Bam wakes up in the middle of a field, where a speaking cube floats in the sky. It welcomes the regulars to the second floor. This floor will assess whether they'll be worthy of climbing the tower. The rules are simple. There are 400 regulars, and they must reduce that number to 200 within the allotted time. They can use any method they prefer. Furthermore, they can also check the remaining time and number of participants using pockets. The test then begins. Bam immediately ducks, picking up his sword and crawling to wherever his guts lead him. Suddenly, a huge muscular man stands before him. Bam, run! With a brawny guy's strength, he easily suppresses Bam, but just when the brute's about to finish off Bam, four arrows pierce through his chest, instantly killing him. Looking up, Bam sees the assailant archers about to slay him too, but a sharpshooter gets at her first. The gunner also tries to kill Bam, but a huge reptilian brutally beats him up. At this point, Bam knows he can't trust anyone and must do his best to survive, so he challenges a large many-eyed monster. Pretty gutsy of him. Suddenly, a guy in a suitcase calls Bam out, saying he should focus on his other opponent behind him. The towering reptilian senses the power in Bam's sword. However, he notices he seems rather weak to handle it. Now, three regulars have cornered Bam, and he has nowhere else to go. With only Rachel's words in his mind, Bam is determined to face anything, including the reptilian pointing his spear at him. Kuhn, the chill guy who reminds me of Chishia from Alice in Borderland, leans over Bam, saying he thought the alligator was his pet. Offended after being called an alligator, Rack Rathraiser stomps his feet. He announces that he wants to hunt down Bam, but Kuhn thinks he's another fool who allows himself to be controlled just like the others. Rack smashes his spear onto the ground, prompting Kuhn to leave. He's looking for strong allies who will climb the tower alongside him. However, upon looking back at Bam's weapon, he's just too curious about the boy. Kuhn turns around to distract Rack covering him with a cloth before he can slay Bam. Kuhn drags Bam away and Rack angrily chases after them. But he's running in the wrong direction because the pair is just behind the large monster Bam wanted to defeat a while ago. Kuhn informs Bam that this enormous creature is from the Da'an clan, who are known to be calm no matter the circumstance. After the Da'an walks away, Kuhn introduces himself to Bam and pulls him closer to ask where he obtained the Black March. As this weapon is only given to the chosen princesses of Jahad, he's curious how a newbie acquired it. Bam says the princess lent it to him, despite the risk. Curious about his identity and purpose here, Kuhn drags him along. Meanwhile, a green-skinned girl with an extendable weapon dukes it out with a skilled swordsman. A nervous man in a tracksuit witnesses their intense battle while they completely ignore his presence. 268 regulars are left. A few more to go and this will all be over. Kuhn figures that Bam hasn't killed anyone and the boy replies that he doesn't remember anything. He only lives by what Rachel taught him. After all, he belongs to her. Upon hearing this, Kuhn stands up and wants to shake Bam's hand to cement their alliance. He emphasizes the importance of not being controlled, but Bam doubts himself and suggests Rag as a better choice for Kuhn. Speaking of the alligator, Rag suddenly appears behind Bam, ready to finish them off. 
but as soon as he brings down his spear, the speaker sings a congratulatory tune for all the survivors, the test is over, and anyone who keeps fighting after the time limit will be disqualified. Now, the next phase begins, where they'll have to find two allies within five minutes. As long as all teammates are touching when the countdown ends, they pass. It seems like Rack, Kuhn, and Bam have to team up in this one, but the alligator straight out refuses. On the other hand, the tracksuit guy, Shibisu, feels lucky to stumble upon the two strong fighters, Anak and Hats. But the two agreed to team up, leaving poor Shibisu hanging. Meanwhile, Rack is still obsessed with defeating Bam, so the boy will give him what he wants. Bam discards his weapon and challenges him to fight. However, Rack wants him to pick up his sword. His passion for beating enemies with powerful weapons loses its purpose if Bam doesn't fight him with it. But the boy refuses even as Rack throws a tantrum. Kuhn tries to reason with Rack, but the reptilian's too stubborn to listen. With no other choice, Kuhn jumps on top of Rack. With only 10 seconds left, Bam picks up his sword and sprints toward them while Kuhn covers Rack's face. As the countdown ends, the two humans cling to the alligator's body. Inside Evan Kell's mothership, 120 players are gathered. Rack still provokes Bam into fighting him, but Bam declines. Kuhn tells the alligator that if the others spot Bam's weapon, they'll hunt down the boy instantly. Despite his stubbornness, Rack calms down when Kuhn gives him chocolate. On the other hand, Shibisu still tries to prove himself to Anok and Hats, but they tell him to shut up. Meanwhile, Bam is already on the other side of the Shinsu barrier. He thinks it's a mistake, but Liro tells him he's passed. Maybe he's just that lucky, but the others scream about how unfair this is. While the others try to push themselves through the wall, Liro invites Bam to a bet. They'll guess who'll pass through the Shinsu first. If Bam wins, Lero will answer any question the boy has and vice versa. However, both of them choose Anak, and she passes through the barrier without a struggle. Hats follow suit, placing pressure on Shibisu, who doesn't know how to get through. Since it's a tie, Lero lets Bam ask anything he has in mind. Of course, Bam inquires whether Lero seen a blonde girl anywhere, but sadly, he hasn't. Well then, he wants to know more about the Irregulars. Lero explains that an Irregular doesn't follow the rules of the tower. The tower splits into the outer tower for residents, the inner tower for those who want to climb the top, and the middle area, which connects the two. Most spend their lives in the outer tower, and Hedon grants permission to certain chosen ones to enter the inner tower. Bam realizes that he and Rachel are the only ones who weren't born in the tower. Simply put, Irregulars are so strong they made it into the inner tower without being chosen. A sharp gunshot into interrupts their conversation as one irregular complains about his misfortune of being unable to pass through. He threatens Lero, who doesn't falter and merely faces him with cold eyes. Without mercy, Lero torments the regular with the immense power of the Shinsu. If he can't pass here, he won't survive the 30th floor, where they must endure Shinsu daily. The regular screams in pain while Lero tells him he's not meant to stay here. When the punishment ends, the regular cries out that he gave up everything just to be here. After observing that spectacle, Bam questions whether he deserves to be here. Lero tells him if he isn't worthy, he'll eventually stop. While the others struggle, Kun and Rack easily cross the barrier, though Kun's briefcase needs more force to pass through. Before Lero leaves, he warns Bam about Kun. Meanwhile, Shibisu also passes through after exerting all his effort. Now the third test can finally commence. While waiting for announcements, Kuhn can't help but recall his past. He was from a royal family, but they threw him out after Maria was chosen to be the princess. Kuhn helped Maria gain the seed of power instead of his own sister, but Maria only used him to achieve her goals. His mother's words reverberate in his head. He can only trust himself. Bam interrupts Kuhn's momentous flashback as he asks about the bright ceiling. Rack laughs hysterically because this boy doesn't know it's the sky he's looking at. Hearing this, Bam recalls Rachel and asks whether stars fill the sky at night. While Rack mocks his ignorance, Kuhn explains that what they see is an imitation of the sky created using Shinsu. He highly doubts the real atmosphere exists. Bam says he'd hoped stars would be visible here as Rachel wanted to see them so badly. However, Kuhn wonders why she left Bam alone after caring for him for so long. Suddenly, loud shrieks resound from the testing grounds. Every group that enters ends up screaming, and those waiting can't figure out what's happening inside. A talking fluorescent plastic bag inserts himself in between Kuhn and Bam. He gives them a clue about time, making Bam think they must finish the exam within five minutes. However, Kuhn reminds him not to trust the guy. He's just using them to prove his theory, but the plastic bag calls him out as the abandoned son of the Kuhn family. Hearing this remark, Kuhn tries to stab him but stops himself. Fortunately, it's now their turn to take the test. 
Inside, they spot a clock and a man named Han Sung Yu sitting in the middle of the area. Kun recognizes him, wondering what he's doing here. The rule of the game is to choose one of the 12 red doors within 10 minutes. If they take longer than that, they'll be forcefully terminated. Rack panics and throws a tantrum because he doesn't like thinking. Bam tries to calm him down while Kun shuts off the noise to try and think clearly. However, Hansung mentions that using only one's brain isn't enough in this game. Kun asks himself why a clock is in the room and they can easily check their pockets for the time. Could the plastic bag be right with his theory? He suddenly loses focus as he remembers Maria. Kun recalls how the people speculated about their romantic relationship even though they were half-siblings. Because of him, the kingdom exiled his whole family. Bam's eyes that long for Rachel create this entire battlefield of regret in Kun's head, and he doesn't want to succumb to it. Before the timer reaches 5 minutes, Kun hears Bam shouting at Rack. Looking in their direction, he sees Rack kicking at one of the doors. The doors turn green, signaling they've passed, thanks to Rack's quote-unquote instinct. Actually, any door they choose is correct as long as they open one within 5 minutes. Feeling like a genius, Rack happily enters the door while Kun still feels defeated. Hansung figures the princess has wounded Kun so deeply that it's now hard for him to trust anybody. However, he should learn that he needs companions who will open doors without uncertainty. The other teams proceed with the test, believe it or not, Shibisu quickly figures out the clue, so he, Anak, and Hats instantly pass. As for Mr. Plastic Vag, Hansung really ordered him to give the regulars a hint, as he wanted to know whether it would assist or hinder them. Meanwhile, Kun still doesn't know if he wants to protect Bam, but he does hope Bam can see the stars with Rachel. On the other hand, Hansung talks with fellow ranker Quant over a cup of tea. Quant simultaneously administered the first and second tests. Only three players survived by killing all the other regulars in 30 minutes. Hansung tells him they'll be in big trouble once the higher-ups discover this sloppy testing. Quant begs him to do something, so Hansung calls Zero Row. While waiting, Bam volunteers to get Rack a drink. However, he doesn't know that he needs money to get one. Luckily, Shibisu buys it for him. He introduces himself and his teammates and finds Bam's comrades to be an interesting bunch. Out of the blue, Shibisu tells Bam that he inspires him. Lero Ro arrives to announce a bonus test for all of them. But no worries, the test is voluntary, but any team who wins will pass all the exams. It's a tempting offer, so everyone wants to participate. As the risks become higher, the chances of Bam finding Rachel are increasing at the same time. Still with danger levels rising with each floor he reaches, Bam has no assurance that he can successfully surpass more tests. But no matter what it takes, he's determined to climb the Tower of God and reach the top. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.